Ma o su yeshuati, the Hana el Shabeach, Tikon beta filati, the Shamta dan Sabeach. Hi friends, welcome to A Small Sanctuary. This time I am taking you through a Hanukkah retrospective. Just like I did for the high holidays, this time we're going to be talking all about how I celebrated Hanukkah with my family last year. So I put up the decorations, which I talked about in a previous video. And what I did last year, which was kind of fun, is I made apple jelly for the first time and filled my sufganiyot with that apple jelly. And that is what you're seeing here. I started early writing some Hanukkah cards and Hanukkah of course was early and you will see photos and some video footage of us celebrating. It was a beautiful Hanukkah. I like it better when Hanukkah is a little later in the year. It makes it feel more wintry and festive. But last year it was right up close to Thanksgiving, which was also an interesting experience. Here we are on the second night having just lit my candles. As you probably suspect, I am a little private when it comes to showing my family on YouTube. So I don't show any images of my children, but there will be little snippets of conversation here and there that I left in for entertainment purposes. And I hope you'll enjoy these. I really enjoy the photography of Hanukkah. And I kind of feel like photography is a modern iteration of Pirsome Hanisa, the proclamation of the miracle. I just love seeing my social media feeds light up with pictures of Hanukkah and Hanukkiyot proclaiming the miracle for all to see. Frying up latke, singing Ma'al Sur, which you heard at the beginning of the clip. That's an authentic recording from way back when, last year. And lighting candles for the fourth night. Here are my resin stars. That's how they look once they're put up, very sparkly. And here I'm handing a gift to the baby and some latkes of course my spode blue italian wear works great for hanukkah it is instinctively hanukkah themed because of the white and blue and here are some presents hiding in the back and a whole big pile in that corner over there and lest you think oh my gosh that is very materialist you need to know that i gift clothes and practical items and craft supplies as presents too and the kids are used to having a big pile but a lot of those things are useful items as well as gifts from family and friends i loved making these hanukkah cookies this was from a recipe of Jake Cohen, which I'll link below, and he has this fantastic hack for icing them in this tie-dye icing pattern, which is super easy and really pretty. I will be making those again because it was a great recipe, and here we are lighting our, well, whatever day it is. Well, one, two, three, four, five, fifth day. Of Hanukkah and my kids are now at an age where they're starting to do really well lighting the candles by themselves you have to be a little bit of a pyromaniac if you're Jewish and be comfortable with open flames because there are a lot of those in our tradition but I actually think it's a really important life skill for kids to learn how to handle fire and how to be how to be responsible uh, with fire so I encourage it as early as they are willing so here we are lighting all of our candles and you know, I just love seeing all five menorot, chanukiyot lit up like that. And it does create a fair bit of warmth in the winter, which is kind of fun as well. So here is my son. He is lighting as well. And this year I'm very excited to try my new Hanukkah, which I got from Target, which is life-size. And I will be sharing that Hanukkah in my next video because it's super cool and I have all kinds of creative crafty ideas for that this year. So here you see all the candles lit for the fifth night plus the shamash. And a family favorite is to have fried chicken during Hanukkah. I don't make it that often, but it is a special treat for our family that time of year. Here we are enjoying some tea time with those beautiful Hanukkah tie-dye cookies by Jake Cohen. 
and my daughter here is proudly showing off her cookies. We had a lot of fun with that icing. And Hanukkah tea time is a perfect thing. I want to highlight that a little bit as well on how you can make Hanukkah tea time. Hanukkah is a perfect holiday for it. And you can do all kinds of fun things with tea time, which often segues very nicely into candle lighting on those early winter evenings. So here is my Spode Blue Italian, as well as this serving dish, which is also in Hanukkah colors and my cookies, of course. I hope you enjoy seeing them. They were kind of um, gently flavored with almond and that was really nice as well. And my kids couldn't resist taking the cookies from the cookie jar. Here we are, one last shot with those little votive candles and the Maccabees and the Gelt. And this is me setting up the candles for the sixth night of Hanukkah. I love this decor by the Kit Cuts. I use it every year. It stores away very easily and it keeps well. And I love how the light filters through. Here is another shot of the seventh night of Hanukkah. I gave these Sidorim to my kids last year. They are Mishkan Tefila for youth and for children. I gave one for children to my middle child and the other one to my older child. And here we are frying up some Souf Gariot. I have this great recipe from Tori Ave, a very uh, well-known food blogger. And I will share that below as well. Did you know that in my home country there is a tradition of making sufganiyot like treats which may have historically come from Sephardim emigrating to that society in the early modern period. So it is doubly nostalgic for me to make those. For our final night of Hanukkah we had a Hanukkah afternoon tea and that led into the final night of gifts. So Sufganiol pair very nicely with a cup of tea, of course, and I filled them here with the apple jelly that I had mentioned earlier at the beginning of the video. And this is when we gather together with our friends and they bring presents for the kids too. And it is just a really lovely, mellow, relaxing night. Based on a home country tradition that I have, I actually give the big gifts on the final night of Hanukkah, which is a great way to build suspense. I know a lot of families do it on the first night. I think you can make arguments either way. Um, the advantage of the first night is that it kind of gets the gifting out of the way. You can focus more on the spirit of the festival. The advantage of the last night is that it builds suspense and you kind of go out with a bang as all the candles are lit to each their own but that's just what we do and I think it's a fun little nod to my own childhood memories here we are with the display and the presents all ready to go in front of the hearth do not light your hearth as the presents are so close by obviously that will not end well and here we are lighting candles on the very last night all of us gathered around the window and my kids, like I said before, did great lighting candles. And they are slowly outgrowing those small chanukiot, which were given to us by a dear friend for them as they are progressing and becoming really big kids now. So I'm looking forward to adding more chanukiot to our collection as the years go by. And here I am in my ugly Hanukkah sweater, which I have to wear. And I wear it at synagogue functions as well over Hanukkah. And it's a big hit. It's from Target and a colleague got it for me and I love it. One of the lights unfortunately is breaking down, but that is not going to stop me from rocking this in all of its glorious, glorious ugliness. I'll do it. I know how much you hate this. <laughs> and I'm a pyromaniac. <laughs> ugly and unpresentable in this sweater. It's very liberating. So here are all of our Hanukkiah finally lit. And here is a final family tradition. I know a lot of people partially influenced by American culture make gingerbread houses for Hanukkah as people make gingerbread houses for other American holidays, including Christmas. And we put our own spin on it by making a gingerbread Beit HaMikdash, a gingerbread temple. Okay, this is our edible Beit HaMikdash. Mm. Menorah, the Beta Mikdash, and then it says Hanukkah. 
57, There's a little bit of irony there. It might not be for everyone, but we enjoy the educational process. And it is a nod to what is crucial at the historical celebration of Hanukkah, which is the rededication of the temple. And you can see that I made a little golden menorah out of gingerbread too, which is made with gingerbread and sprayed with gold food spray. So here they are tearing it apart as one would. Um, all the icing on, and the decorations that they added to our very simple gingerbread temple and it gets eaten. Gingerbread keeps really well and it is a great fun little tradition. That concludes my video friends. I hope you enjoyed this retrospective. Feel free to like and subscribe this video and I will have more Hanukkah content coming. I am glad you were here to relive some of last year's Hanukkah memories with me. And I look forward to making new memories this Hanukkah. Take care, everyone.